They just take my nice clothing, throw it onto a blanket, pick up the blanket, and toss it into the truck. What a nice way to move my clothing. Thanks. I'm sitting on this like fluffy, fluffy gray chair. And we used to have this family pet named Rory and he was a Polish lowland sheepdog, which you've probably never heard of because they're really rare. But this is the photo of him. And so my mom and I call this our Rory chair because it reminds me of his fur. So this is my Rory chair. This is my living room. Welcome. It's time for a story. And this story, my friends, has been waiting to be told. Wow. Okay, so back in December, I released a video about my nightmare neighbor situation linked below in case you have watched it yet but that'll give you an idea of why we had this like very last minute move that we decided to make in December in the midst of the holiday season. Gallop you're interrupting the video. Oh does he have no he just doesn't even care. It's all about him. Always. Oh, no. <laughs> you're a really good guy. Yeah you're pretty great. Everyone loves you. You're very lucky. Love you. So in the midst of the holiday season, my manager being in town, the same week I had my David and my Jeff Whittick collab, the same week as the Streamy Awards, it was such a hectic week, we moved. So that week was already just absolute chaos and then not even the move could go smoothly. This was honestly the move from hell. Like I don't, I'm sure people have had it worse, but like everybody I tell this to was like, oh my God, like how did that happen? And it wasn't just one moving company involved. No, 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 I, mm -mm. My friends, it was two. We had two separate moving companies that both had major issues. Ridiculous. So we had my assistant at the time look into moving companies because we were so busy and usually we've always like packed and moved our own stuff as much as possible and we just have like the pre-packed boxes ready to go and you know, anything we can't move ourselves. But we were so busy and this was such a last minute move that we were like, you know what? Let's just hire a moving company that'll pack our boxes and move move everything for us to make it as easy on us as possible. We had a two week layover where we were paying for like both apartments to make sure we could kind of slowly try to move stuff over. We were trying to make this the most foolproof move possible given it wasn't like planned far in advance. So all that pre-planning was useless because <laughs> nothing went to plan. So we hired this moving company. They sell it to us. Like they're like all of our movers are athletes, like college athletes, super fit, like running up and down the stairs. They're not even gonna wait for the elevator cause it's quicker for them to just sprint. They're like getting their workouts in for their, for their spring training. Like they were just like really selling it to us. You know, I was like, great. My apartment will get all moved and I'll find a husband, a cute athlete. Like I was ready. And they show up three guys. Cause we told them like, this is a three man job, you know, two bedroom apartment. Apartment, lots of clothes as you guys saw in my closet reorganization video so they send the three guys and they're on it you know they're they're sussing out the place clearly one of them was like the brains of the operation the head of it all like he's like skinny he's like you that room you that room and they're like making a game plan like what are we gonna do first step a step b and they begin packing everything up myself and my gallop come to this new apartment so that i can get some work done and take some phone calls and whatnot and just basically honestly get Gallup and I out of the way because I wasn't helping in any capacity. I was just gonna be in the way and so was Gallup. So we figured I'd just be here and that way when they start bringing stuff in the afternoon, you know, we'd be here. We booked off them for the entire day. They came early in the morning and they gave us like a flat rate, which was great. We were like, great, we know what we're gonna be paying. They gave us the price for all the boxes. Like we were set, it was all good. They pack everything. I'm over here and I get this phone call from my mom and she's like, they're telling me they can't move us. I was like, excuse me? Basically what happened is they come to her, like already partially packed up. And they're like, oh, by the way, we can pack you, but we can't move you. And we were like, I'm sorry, you're a moving company, not a packing company, moving. We gave you our new address. Like when we booked you, I don't understand. And he was like, yeah, yeah. Listen, we're not allowed to cross the street. So my old apartment, the way it was laid out is the loading zone for the apartment was across the street. This was a one way quiet residential street and had a crosswalk right there with lights. 
So it was like the safest possible crossing. We moved into this building using that loading zone, different moving company, no problems. We see people move in and out of the building all the time with that loading zone, no problems. And they're telling us, yeah, our company, because of our insurance for safety, won't let us cross the street with your boxes to load the truck. And we were like, you parked the truck, crossed the road, came into the apartment and began to pack. And you're just now telling us like two hours into you packing. I'm really baffled as to how we've gotten this far. And they were like, yeah, look, we can't move you. And we talked to like our leasing office, the guys who worked at the office. And we were like, have you guys ever had any moving company say this or have any trouble with the loading zone being across the street? And they're like, no, we have never heard of that. And the reason we weren't able to just have them bring the boxes down to the sidewalk and then pull the truck around and fill it is because if somebody was to like trip on one of the boxes or on some of our stuff on the sidewalk while we were waiting for them to have it all out and pull it around, we would be in trouble. Like we would be liable. I guess that's the word. Is that the word? Maybe that's the word. I don't know. I'm trying to sound smart. I don't know. But basically like we would be the ones in trouble by the city if somebody was to trip on one of our boxes or some of our stuff. Plus like we'd have to have somebody standing out there watching all the stuff as all of these boxes fill the like city sidewalk waiting until it was all down for them to quickly pull a truck around and fill it. So that wasn't an option to us either. Also, they would have to have that zone open. So at that time, all of those parking spots were filled. So the only way that plan would have worked is if nobody tripped, nobody stole our stuff and one of the like enough space opened up that the truck would be able to fit there for a quick amount of time while they like quickly filled it. So it wasn't an option to us. And we were like, okay, great. And our leasing office guys advise us, they're like, Real, like you can't, you can't do this. It's not safe, it's not good. It's not how this ever works. Like that's not the protocol. You can't do it. So we were like, <sighs> deep breaths. We had booked this whole Wednesday off for moving. Like this was our plan. This is what we had set aside time for. The Thursday, the next day, we had stuff booked in and the Friday was the Streamy Awards. So we were like, okay, we're just gonna figure it out. We're gonna stay calm. We're gonna figure it out. And at that point we were so done with that old apartment, like to the point where we were, we were so psyched up to be like Wednesday. Wednesday we will sleep in the new apartment. There will be no noise. There will be no smell of marijuana. Like we will be golden. And we were so upset that we had to spend another night in that apartment. Cause like mentally we had just so checked out that we just brought our pillows and our comforters ourselves and slept on the floor. In fact, we brought like stuff over in a few different trips like we we honestly brought as much stuff over as we could anything that was expensive like my nice handbags or shoes jewelry we brought over like any of my toiletries that were delicate like we brought over as much stuff that day that Wednesday as possible we just dedicated the rest of our day to like moving stuff ourselves and to leave the least amount of stuff possible for the next movers that we booked and my mom hadn't brought the comforters over yet so all I had in my bedroom was a lamp on the floor and my pillows and Gallup. I have a purple mattress and purple pillows, like the brand, not the color. And Gallup had a purple bed, but he hated it so much, which has always been weird to me because he loves sleeping on my bed, but he refused to sleep on his purple bed. The only bed company he will sleep on is these dog beds called Bowser beds. Not sponsored, I paid for them, but anyways, I donated it. But I go to the bathroom and Gallup had like nowhere comfortable to lay but the carpeted floor. And I come out of the bathroom and I take this picture right here. He is curled up, my massive 99 95 pound dog is curled up tiny on my purple pillow. And I was like, oh, so now you like my purple pillow. But anyways, I digress. So we slept on the floor and that afternoon we had our assistant call other moving companies and she finds this moving company. And honestly, is it LA Pro Movers? Is it Star Moving Company? Like it came in so many different names. It was so terrible. Honestly, I might like link their name in the description box to like warn people because it was so bad. It was so so bad. Wow. Okay. So she calls them and she's like, Hey, do you have time to move somebody tomorrow? It's a two bedroom apartment. We need you to pack all the closets and everything up. This is how many large pieces of furniture there is. This is the new address to the old address. Like this is the distance you'd be driving. Like gave them all the information said, this is a three man job specifically said three man job. And we need the packing supplies. We don't have any boxes or papers or plastics, none of it. And we need them to pack the apartment. We said all of that on the phone. My mom was there. Well, my assistant had the phone call. It was all very clear. 
Thursday. My mom gets up. It's go time. We're ready. We've moved on. Game faces. She gets there and she is like holding that loading zone. Like she is sitting outside in the loading zone. Just like this is my loading zone. I'm moving today. This is my loading zone. She was not letting anybody take our loading zone. We were getting this move done and ready. And so they were supposed to arrive at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock rolls around. They're not there. She calls at 10 20. Yeah, they're 20 minutes away. Okay, fine. They arrive at 11 20, an hour and 20 minutes late. Fine. We're not mad. We're just gonna, we're just, we're just staying calm and we're gonna get the move done. That's what we're gonna do. Just stay calm and get the move done. And so they're at first like, we'll find our own parking. She's like, no, <laughs> I've held this loading zone. I've sat here for an hour and a half holding this loading zone for you. I've got it. Come to this loading zone. And they get there. They park in the loading zone and uh, not three men get out. Two. Two get out of the car, which is not what we had requested. Two. This is a three-man job. We knew it was a three-man job. Three men came the day before. We requested three men. Two men show up an hour and 20 minutes late. They then go up to the apartment and guess what? They have a revelation. They don't have any packing supplies. None. No boxes. No paper. No saran wrap plastic to wrap furniture. Nada. We have zero. This is a moving company that comes with nothing but a truck and two men. Oh yes, they had moving blankets. And so my my mom is like, okay, okay, I'm gonna stay calm. I'm just gonna breathe through it because we don't have time. Tomorrow is the Streamy Awards. Within five days, we are heading back to Toronto for two weeks for Christmas and then a week long cruise. We don't have time to not move today. Like this is the only day we have. And it is now like noon, so we have no options. And so they're like, oh, you could go to like Home Depot and pick them up. We don't have a car, and that's like a 40 minute Uber or left right away. So she's like, okay, I'm gonna go to Staples. That's what we have near us, and I'm gonna see what we have. So she buys some boxes, and she starts frantically shoving things into boxes because we needed, we knew we needed like a full day. And now we only had the elevator in our new building booked for the move from one to four. And it's new and the stuff isn't even packed. So my mom's like, oh dear God, like we need to get this stuff like packed. So she's just throwing things in boxes. Well, one of the two men is just standing by the truck kind of shuffling things in the truck. That's it. So all this whole move is up to one guy, pretty much, and my mom. And they're like, yeah, we'd like, somebody needs to stay with the truck the whole time. Which, I don't know, obviously every company has different policies. The company the day before, although they were not able to cross the road, they were at least ha able to have three guys in helping pack at once. Like, I don't know. It's, it was very strange. You would think how this could work is they would both be in the apartment getting all the stuff ready, and then once they were ready, one guy would go down to the truck, have it open. The one would be bringing stuff up and down or just down. And then the other would be moving it in. Like why the whole time did he pretty much have to be at the truck? Like it was a very weird broken system. So when you pack up a closet, you have like closet boxes where you hang things in the box and then you move the box. But because they didn't bring any of that, despite the fact that it was requested and they don't like just have that at Staples, they didn't have any of that. So how did they choose to move my clothes, you guys? All of my clothing? Oh, well why? didn't they just grab it and toss it in the truck in a pile? So they just shove all my clothes still on the hangers, in which, which they broke many of. They broke many of my hangers. Whatever. <laughs> they just take my nice clothing, throw it onto a blanket, pick up the blanket, and toss it into the truck. What a nice way to move my clothing. Thanks. They don't saran wrap or wrap any of my furniture, not my couch, my velvet couch, my velvet chair, not the mattresses, nothing. Usually when a company moves these things, they like saran wrap it so it doesn't get dirty, it doesn't get stained, nothing happens to it. Honestly, it's end of February now when I'm filming this and we just now got the smells out of the couches because these guys, and I feel so bad, like they were really overworked, I know that, but they were sweating all over the velvet furniture and they didn't wrap it and so the furniture smelled like for the past two months so bad of like dirty sweat it was really awful and again I feel bad because it's not their fault that they're so overworked and that their company didn't send them with boxes and didn't send them with a third man for a three-man job but you need to wrap stuff like that's how moving works it was really gross it was really gross and so they for some reason decided they need to like take apart my Ikea bed like they took all the, the legs off the bed instead of just moving 
moving the bed. Like it was, they just did weird things that in my last move with the same furniture didn't happen. Really weird. Oh God, what else went wrong? So they finally get, just throw all of my stuff into their truck. Half of it in boxes, half of it not, and half of it still in my old apartment. My best friend Brayden, who you guys all know and love, and my mom had to spend another like five hours the next day, at least, continuing to pack stuff up and move it. Cause they didn't even finish the job. Cause they ran out of time and they didn't have the supplies. <laughs> After stuff, my mom and Brayden were like, we're throwing it out, we're throwing it out. And then we got here and my mom was like, where's the ketchup? I'm like, I think you threw it out. Like they just, they're just like so done with moving stuff. So they get everything. They just throw it all in the truck, including my shoes. He complimented how nice my shoe collection is <laughs> while throwing them all into the back of a truck. A great way to damage my shoes, sir. Thank you. That you so, uh, so eloquently told me are so nice. So they throw all the stuff in. They bring it to the new apartment. Oh my God. I'm so, this was so frustrating. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. It's this so- This is the part you're here for. Like, this is the I've part I'm witnessing. Time. Okay, so they get here and they pull up in the loading zone. And of course, one guy has to stay in the truck. They take, and this is my, the new build. I am new to this building. I'm trying to make a good first impression. It is a very nice building. And they just start taking all of my stuff out of the back of the truck and filling the public space with it. The hallway, just filling the hallway with my stuff. <laughs> Not in boxes, just throwing piles of my clothing on the ground in the hallway for everybody to walk by. Like it was so, they left my mattress, my massive purple queen size mattress in the elevator just going up and down. <laughs> I got in the elevator to take Gallup out and <laughs> the mattress is just in there. And I was like, why is that's my mattress? And somebody else is like in there with me and they're like, and I was like, it's not mine, I don't know. And then I like get down to take Gallup out and all my shit is everywhere. And I was like, not mine, not mine, not mine. And like you just walk past. It's like like a war zone. Like this other guy in the elevator is like trying to get through all my stuff and to get inside. And then I come back like 40 minutes later and my mattress is still in the elevator. It's still just going up and down with everybody. And this is like six o'clock now. Like we had the elevator booked from one to four. This is after one to four. Like this is no longer just for me moving. This is for everybody to use now in their daily life. And my mattress is going up and down with them. They're probably like, what the? Like it was so weird. I was like, I have never seen this happen before. And granted, then the elevator to my bed, like to my apartment is quite a far distance. I am not close to the elevator. But then they just started to like, once they finally started loading stuff into the elevator, they would just unload it once again into the public space. They would just dump it all there. And one of our new neighbors, great first impression guys, one of our new neighbors was like definitely pissed. Like she was like, this is the public space. Like I should be able to use the elevator and my space. And I was like, I agree. Like, it was so awkward and everybody's just seeing my stuff in this completely chaotic, unorganized mess of an unprofessional move. Now, you know what? In going through this, I am gonna link the company below because nobody should ever use this company. And I'll get into the dispute we've had with them as well. Don't worry, it didn't end this day. So finally, it is like seven o'clock at night. My stuff is everywhere. There's literally a pile of my clothes in the living room. There's a pile in my shower. <laughs> It is so weird. Like it is just such a wreck. First, I think they put like my mom's mattress in my room and hers in there, like they had to flip. The it was so ridiculous. Everything was going wrong. And we had called this company multiple times throughout the, the day to be like, uh, hey, there's no boxes. Uh, hey, you sent two guys. And they were like, oh yeah, totally. Yeah, that is our mistake. Yeah, we we forgot to pack the, to tell them to pack the boxes. We were like, this is your, literally your entire job. Like this is your only job <laughs> is to coordinate the move. And you're, you're like, yep, sorry, you did say that. We forgot. Like that. That's not acceptable. You can't just forget the boxes when you have one freaking job. So it took us so long with this unorganized chaotic mess of a move to actually figure out where our stuff even was and put it away. And I'm blind. So being in a new space for me is already difficult because I'm already figuring out my navigation. But then on top of that, to have everything everywhere and not nothing in organized boxes, nothing in places that make sense was so difficult. And like I said, they didn't even complete the move. There was still stuff that took hours more of packing up and moving to get here. It was crazy. It's so baffling. I 2019. <laughs> the end. 
this is how we ended our year. 2019 was interesting. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna take a deep breath, it's fine. So we spend now a long time on the phone. My assistant is on the phone screaming <laughs> with this guy because this is how unprofessional they are, you guys. The guy who like is the same one who admitted he forgot the boxes was screaming. He was like, I get it, I forgot the boxes, but it's not a big deal. Like he was, ye I was like, even if a customer is yelling at you because they're upset that the move went wrong, you remain composed, my friend. You stay composed. Your job is to be in like customer service. Your job is to be like, like I've had moments where I'm like kind of frustrated or seen other people frustrated with customer service. And the customer service rep is like, I'm so sorry, ma'am. I know, I do understand. If you could just take a deep breath, I'm gonna need you to calm down. Like they stay composed. This guy was like, I'm ex-military. Like he was literally like, I'm gonna come for your father. Like it was bizarre. Like I was like, oh my God. And like, don't cross my old assistant. She was like, I am on it, Molly. Like she was, she was like, don't you raise your voice with me. Like I was like, this is my new apartment, you guys. These are new neighbors. We left the old apartment for noise. We don't need a noise complaint. Like it was so awkward. And the one guy, so the one guy who stayed at the truck all day was like an older gentleman, bless him. He was very kind, but he was older, you know, not quite as, about 60. He wasn't gonna be lugging and then throwing stuff. You know, he wasn't the, he wasn't the heavy lifter of the two. He wasn't the muscles behind it. He was the standing at the truck and moving stuff guy. And so the, the poor guy who was in charge, this one guy on his own, doing all the heavy lifting, all the big moving, this poor guy is like in the room like, yeah, she, she, like, cause he was like, it's not right how they treat us. Like, it's not, it's not good. So I feel so bad because they aren't getting treated well. It's not their fault. Like this company is shambles. And like I said, I don't even know what they're called because the company we booked and the company who we made the like the payment out to had different names. One was called like LA Pro Movers and the other was like Star Movers or LA Star Movers. Like they were different names. So real weird, but it's so ridiculous. So she's yelling. The other guy is yelling back like, there's nothing I can do about it now. You just need to move on. And I was like, so, and they're like, yeah, we need payment. And we're like, okay, but we don't really want to pay for this. Like you didn't offer this, like, or at least a heavy discount. Like, this is crazy. So like, we can give you 10% off. And I was like, oh great, taxes? Like what? Like that's, that's nothing for what an absurd, absurdly like unprofessional job this was. My family- I feel more sorry for the guys that were working. I do them. too, because it's, I don't- We gave them a good tip because it was- And that's what we said to them. We honestly, we were like, I'll pay you cash, but I don't want this going to your company. But they were like, well, we're in a bind because we have to pay the company. Like, you know, there was no easy way to do it. And they were like, we need to go, but we can't go without payment. And we just wanted to get this done with. Like the reason we didn't send them packing, that <laughs> send them packing <laughs> sooner. That was no pun intended, but it was punny. Is because we just need to get this done. Like I said, so now at this point, we're just like exhausted, emotionally, physically, mentally drained and confused and frustrated. And we're just like, fine, give us the 10% discount. We'll dispute this later. Well, they weren't gonna like, my assistant had another call with the company. They like accepted no blame. They're like, we did our job. And we are like, no, you didn't. And so then we proceeded to submit a complaint with the Better Business Bureau because truly nobody should have to be paying for these services. Nobody should have a moving company be so unprofessional and nobody should have customer service reps being so rude and so un un unhelpful in like quite a distressing situation. We've moved a lot. They say one of the most most stressful things in a person's life is moving. And we've moved a number of times as a family and on my own with my mom. This is our third apartment in LA just in the last two years. Like we've moved, we moved countries, okay? We know how moving goes. This is not how moving is supposed to go. So they took a very stressful situation in general and then made it like literally a thousand times more stressful. And they were accepting no blame, but a 10% discount, ridiculous. And so I really believed that this just shouldn't be happening. And we made a complaint with the Better Business Bureau and they just kept disputing it being like, no, we moved everything. And we're like, okay, we could take photos of the stuff still in our cupboards if you want to see it. Like the, anything we said, they're just like, no, no, no. And so it got to a point where they like, it like timed out. We went back and forth so much and they didn't respond to the final thing that it timed out. So then we submitted another complaint. The first one was under my assistant's name. And one of their big things was like, she wasn't on the invoice. That's not who, like, we don't even know who that is. And we're like, BS, you definitely know who that 
that is because you yelled at her on the phone and she's the one who like made the booking. So we were like, fine, if that's one of your complaints, our next Better Business Bureau dispute will be through me, who's the person on the paying card, the person who's on the lease. And yeah, it's still just gone nowhere. So honestly, I'm at a point where I've, I've tried to settle this with them in a kind way. I've tried to say, look, I deserve, you know, I deserve a discount on this. Better Business Bureau deserves to know about this and none of it's gotten anywhere. So I'm just at the point where I need to just tell people like, don't use this company. It was a really horrific experience and nobody should go through that. My friend reached out cause she's moving and she's like, hey, who did you use? And I was like, here are the two companies. Don't use either of them because she lives in the same building as me. Honestly, the first moving company, I'm not gonna name their name because it's not like they were bad. They just have a very bizarre policy. Like if you have a loading zone on the same side of the street as your building, it's not a problem. But my friend lives in my old building. So she wouldn't be able to use them because of the crossing the street issue. But I told her, I was like, don't use either of these because they're horrible. So she's like, great, I know who not to book. If you've ever moved in LA and have a good moving company recommendation, let me know. Because if I move again, which eventually, obviously I will have to, I wanna know who to book. Cause currently I only know who not to book. So that's my horrible moving experience. Comment below if you have a horrible moving experience and uh, how it went down. I hope you guys found this story interesting. I feel like it was cathartic for us to just yeah. release it. That built up maintained stress is gone from my body. Screw you, LA Pro Mover. Suck. And also, this is my merch. So if you've made it this far and you're wondering where this cute little oversized pink one-of-a-kind tee is from, it is from my merch at fanjoy.co slash Molly Burke. Get your own. I'm wearing it like one size up than I usually do, so it's just loose and comfortable. It is a unisex fit. So if you are a strong, confident man willing to wear pink, you should check this out too, along with all my other merch pieces. Link below. All right, love you guys. Bye.